this video, I'm going to be comparing games to Ticket to Ride and finding five games that I think are much better. So first I better explain why I'm even choosing Ticket to Ride as the topic for this video. What's wrong with Ticket to Ride? Why do I need to have five games that are better than that game? And I realize my audience, I probably have a varied audience. Maybe you love Ticket to Ride, or maybe you don't like Ticket to Ride very much. I'm just gonna be honest with how I feel about the game, and we'll get started from there. So, to describe my feeling, I've got a little metaphor for you. Imagine I was a foodie, and we meet for the first time, and uh, we're talking about hobbies, and you're asking, hey, well, what do you like to do? And I said, oh, well, I'm a real foodie. And you go, oh, wow, I know exactly what you're talking about. Have you tried bananas? Food is so much more complex and rich than like individual primary members of the uh, food pyramid. And the realm of games is so broad and so deep. There is so much there that by comparison, Ticket to Ride feels like a banana. Is it a bad game? I, 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 I have my complaints about it, which I'll talk about in this video. I don't want to pick on Ticket to Ride, but if you are feeling like there's something more, something beyond Ticket to Ride, that's what this video is all about. The board games in this list are organized by the strength of my recommendation, from five to one. Each of these games somehow embodies something about Ticket to Ride that I really enjoy. They have something in common with Ticket to Ride, and yet something distinct, something that makes it a little bit more rich or a little bit more interesting. But most importantly, every game on this list somehow encapsulates something great about Ticket to Ride. If it didn't do that, if it was just great games, then I would just call this game top five games. But they're all games that somehow grab that essence. If discovering underrated games that are comparable to popular games is interesting to you, I might also recommend that you watch 10 board games that are better than Dominion, 10 gateway games that are better than Catan, 5 easy to teach thematic strategy board games, and 5 games that are better than Everdell. I also want you to know that no other game on this list has to do with trains. Obviously, Ticket to Ride is about trains and building a route across America, and while I could find a bunch of board games that were also about trains, the ones that I know don't really exhibit the same type of gameplay or the same feel. For example, a terrain game that I really love is Imperial Steam. I think that does a great job of embodying its theme, but in terms of the complexity of its gameplay, it is an entirely different class. So. What I've decided to do is focus on games that are all the kinds of games that you can play with your family, just like Ticket to Ride. That being said, let's talk about number five. Number five is a game I would highly recommend if you're interested in the polynomino placing mechanic. I'll describe in a minute what that's all about, but the game is Copenhagen. So if you're not familiar with polynominoes, they are pieces like in Tetris. And if you're familiar with Tetris, the objective of the game is to fill rows by getting these little pieces to fit together like puzzle pieces, right? Well, in Copenhagen, the object of the game is to be the first to score 12 points, and you score points by either filling columns or rows with these tiles. You get the tiles by completing sets of cards that you draft from the common area, just like Ticket to Ride. So for example, in Ticket to Ride, you can pick up any two cards, and in Copenhagen, you can pick up two cards as long as they're adjacent to each other. You pick up those cards, and then once you have a complete set in Ticket to Ride, you place a route on the map. But in Copenhagen, you are uh, playing a set in order to pick up a tile and place it into your little city board. And as you complete rows or columns, you score points. The first to 12 wins the game. It is a directly analogous to Ticket to Ride in my mind, but it doesn't have uh, the route placing mechanic, which I think is frustrating for some people where they have a route in mind and then somebody interferes with them. If that's something you don't like about Ticket to Ride and you'd like something that's a little bit more uh, independent where people can't interfere with your plans, Granted, it still has the drafting mechanic, so somebody could take the cards you want, but they can't really interfere with your board. If that sounds interesting to you, I think you would really like Copenhagen. 
Along the same lines as games that are not as competitive, I have one more recommendation on this list that I think you'll really like if you are annoyed by people interfering with your routes when you're playing Ticket to Ride. Um, although mechanically it's quite a bit different, which I think you might really enjoy because you don't want to have too many games that are similar in gameplay, it's the game Mariposas. So mechanically this is very different actually. It's gorgeous by the way. Uh, the objective of the game is to get butterflies to migrate successfully and achieve victory points by satisfying objectives on cards that come out during the gameplay. Uh, the way you play is on your turn, you are playing cards from your hand, and the cards you play from your hand allow you to move your butterflies along the map. Um, you can either move one butterfly, you can move multiple butterflies, and where they land... You can either get tokens, or you can get bonuses, or you can achieve objectives, and uh, you can lay eggs, which will become new butterflies, because no single butterfly survives the entire migration. The migration of the butterflies happens over generations. And so it's kind of cool how you start with a few butterflies and you get more and more, and then old butterflies die and new ones are born. I really like that cycle of the game, but most importantly, I put it on the... On the um, list because this is one of the least threatening competitive games that I've ever purchased actually and so if you like that if you basically want Ticket to Ride without anybody interfering with your plans Mary Postas is the one and it's gorgeous. Number three is a game that is much more strategic than Ticket to Ride. So if your chief complaint about Ticket to Ride is that there's too much luck involved, you know, it, it all just depends on what the cards are or what objectives you draw. If that's your beef with Ticket to Ride think you might really like this, although I, I gotta say it is a very strategic game and it may be too intense. It plays excellent two-player. It's small box, the game Arboretum. And in Arboretum, uh, it's a card game, really. And you're getting points by putting cards in your Arboretum in front of you. You're laying down cards in a grid. But how you score at the end of the game is based off of what cards you're able to keep in your hand. So for example, if you want to score your purple trees, you need to have more purple cards in your hand than your opponent, or at least the value needs to be higher than your opponent. But you can't get the points unless the cards are on the table. So you have to find just the right balance between how many cards you play and how many cards you keep. And you have to pay attention to what your opponent is doing, because if you can tell that they might be keeping purple cards, well then you might not be able to beat them. I mean, the whole thing, there are so many levels of things to think about. Uh, you play out the entire deck, so there is some luck as far as when the cards come, but you know that all of the cards will be played, so you can kind of count cards a little bit, and I guess that kind of has kind of like a bridge aspect or something. Um, and there is a lot to think about, because got to play one card and pick up another card and you're trying to keep exactly the right balance. I, ultimately, it's set collection, just like Ticket to Ride. I mean, you're getting points because of how many cards you've laid out on the table. More cards, more points. Um, but man, very, very thoughtful. So worth taking a look at if you like strategy. Number two is a game that has a characteristic that I find is very successful with families because in this game, people don't have to wait to take their turn everyone can play at the same time. It's simultaneous gameplay. The game is Tiny Towns. Now, the commonality between Tiny Towns and Ticket to Ride is that both games require you to pay attention to what your opponents are doing. So if you think in Ticket to Ride, you're trying to figure out what routes people are trying to place. And you realizing, okay, well, they're picking up a lot of yellow cards, so they want to go between these cities, or they're picking up blue. So you're trying to figure out what cards they want to do and what routes they are, are, are doing so that they can't interfere with your routes, right? In tiny towns, again, the mechanic is totally different, but the thinking is the same. The object of the game is to build buildings in your town. The way you build buildings is by putting materials in the grid. And whenever the materials in your grid match the pattern of a building, you can replace the materials with the building and get the points. Okay? But here's the thing. I said it's simultaneous gameplay. Everyone's doing this at the same time. There is one aspect in which you take turns. Players take turns being the master builder. The master builder is the one who decides 
which material everyone has to take. So maybe the person on your left is the master builder and they pick a red cube. And so everyone takes a red cube. And then the master builder passes and the next one carry, takes a yellow cube. So everyone takes a yellow cube. Now it's your turn and you're thinking about what you, what you want to build, but you already have a red cube and a yellow cube, and you know that if you had, you know, blue cube, for example, maybe you could build such and such building, but you wanted to do something else, so what you have to do is look at what other people are trying to do. Well, why did he take red? He took red because, oh, I think he's probably trying to build that, so if he's trying to build that, he's probably going to take brown next. Oh, and she's probably going to take blue. So if brown and blue, that means, oh, if I take brown, Oh, I see, I can do brown and then he'll probably take brown and then I'll be able to build this thing, right? You have to pay attention to what other people are doing if you're going to play this game well. Otherwise, the only aspect of the game that can interfere with your plans is people taking something that you don't want. You have to anticipate what they want, just like Ticket to Ride, but the game is completely um, independent of luck. It's Totally a game among players and anticipating what other people are all about. That's why I find the game is so much fun and I love it because it's simultaneous gameplay. Um, unlike Arboretum, which I think is very deeply strategic and would be difficult for my kids. I've never played Arboretum with my kids. Um, Tiny Towns, even though it's pretty strategic, it seems more accessible. This is a game that anybody can play. They might not play it well, but they'll be able to understand it. I think kids could really learn something from playing a game like Tiny Towns. Um, my, only, my only complaint about that game is that it does feel a lot more abstract. It is a more abstract game of the five that I've named. Number one is a great game for this list. It has everything Ticket to Ride has, but better. Now, here's what it's all about. Imagine you're playing Ticket to Ride, but all of the train cards, like the red ones, the yellow ones, the blue ones, etc., each color card has a special ability. Just imagine here. So whenever you're playing a red route, maybe the special ability there is that it counts for having one more train than the number of cards you played. So three cards becomes four cards or something like that. Or maybe whenever you play a set of blue cards, maybe the special ability of blue cards is you get to move your trains from one route to another route. You get to move them. Like, Imagine all the trains had special abilities. And then imagine there were different colors and every time you played, you always just selected a different set of colors so that every game could be different. If you can imagine that, that's basically what this game is. This game is Ethnos. In Ethnos, you are vying for dominance over this you know, fanciful region. You've got like mermaids and dwarfs and elves and all of these clans and you're trying to obtain power so rather than having the route placement it's all about putting influence discs in these different regions and in order to place an influence disc you have to play a set of cards and so you could play three dwarf cards and then you could place an influence disc in one region or you could play uh, four cards that are all the same color in order to play a disc in that region now players keep doing this until they reach the end of an age. The end of an age happens whenever a certain number of dragon cards are revealed from the deck. As soon as that happens, all of the regions are scored and players score points based on the sizes of the clans that they played. Just like in Ticket to Ride, based on the length of your routes. So it has a lot of the same scoring. It has a lot of the same mechanic. On your turn, you're basically taking cards from the face-up uh, row that's available to all players or you're playing cards from your hand but some cool things that kind of mitigate for luck whenever you play a clan from your hand whatever cards remain in your hand go back on the table so you cannot hoard I think that's awesome another thing I really like is it replaces the route mechanic uh, in in Ticket to Ride you're trying to plan based on the routes that come out and so um, you know, you draw a route and you get a certain number of bonus points if you complete that certain route. There is some luck there. What if you draw a route and you've already built that one? You can get points kind of meaninglessly. In this game, all the information is public. You know how many points each region is going to be worth at the beginning of the game, so there isn't the same luck there is with drawing objective cards. It's a lot more balanced. I think thematically, uh, and the art, in terms of the art, it's a lot more interesting, at least 
for me. I mean, I can understand not everyone is into fantasy type themes, but it is very beautifully done. And I love the fact that rather than stop at like six different uh, tribes or clans or whatever they're called, they added extras. So you can get a different mix every single time you play. I think that's really cool. That game is called Ethnos. I think it's definitely worth a try if you just want, you know, just a little something extra to take it to ride. Hope you like this list. I'd love to hear your recommendations. If you've got anything that you think belonged on here, I almost did a top 10. I, I decided to focus on just five, but I'd love to hear what you think. Maybe there's some really good ones that I should have included. Um, lastly, Aside from doing the YouTube videos, I do like to make designs. This shirt is my design. It's called Evolution of Games. It has backgammon and go, checkers, chess, parcheesi, and modern meeple. Pretty cool. I also have a few other things. I put them all on the perfectboardgame.myshopify.com. If you'd like to go shopping there, that actually supports me in a really big way. Thank you for watching this channel, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.